Please unmute your mic. Okay, thank you, Samson, for having me. And um, I think this is an important conversation. But before I go into the city thing, I want to place on record that um, the single spine was not the cause of any of the economic crisis that we have had. Uh, single spine today, the average salary on it today is about 2,500 Ghana cities. It was much less when it was introduced uh, some 14 years ago. But I leave that for another discussion. And we need to be a little bit more dispassionate about the causes or the recurring challenges that we face. Uh, the workers of Ghana are too hard pressed to be blamed for any economic uh, crisis. Something on the city, um, I recall the discussion we had almost two years ago mm. about the city depreciation. And for me, the unnecessary reaction from the Bank of Ghana at the time particularly issuing a statement attributing uh, certain things to me, certain statements I've made on the, on the program. I thought it was unnecessary because they, they should focus on the bigger picture and not focus on individuals expressing their views and frustrations about the city depreciation and its impact on Ghanaians. Again, I also made, the, the, I recall, I made this recollection to remind you and listeners that something you have had too many discussions about the city. It means that it has become a recurring problem. It is. Uh, and I'm not sure we will have anything new to say about the city and its depreciation. Okay. It boils down simply to the structure of the economy we have. The structure we spoke about eloquently in 2016. Uh, the gorgeous spec economy. So you have uh, an economic structure of production, uh, export, and um, an external payment regime that essentially put pressure on the city. So the most important uh, productive sectors of this economy are in foreign hands, gold and oil. So you realize that when we export, we actually are able to achieve a trade surplus but then developments in the capital account, where we have allowed the foreign companies to repatriate large sums of, city, uh, of dollars, means that the trade balance is overwhelmed by developments in the capital account, and the city will continue to depreciate. So the Secretary General on May 1st talks about our excessive import. It is one aspect of it. We are importing nearly everything. Then the little dollar that comes in is also in the hands of foreigners. When you are in an economic crisis such as this, you need to leverage on your resources. And in our case, the natural resources. But for a very long time, we have placed those natural resources in the hands of foreigners. And it's in their interest to repatriate those, those things. And we should not forget that the exchange rate is simply a price. So there's a price we are paying for for the excessive demand of dollars or any of the other international major currencies. And we are demanding it to import goods that we could conveniently produce here. So the underlying causes we all know, and there's very little new that anybody can say. But then come back to your question. Is anybody listening? Uh, we have complained a lot. And it seems to me that those at the helm uh, think that they have their own solutions, and that solution isn't working for Ghanaians. Now, something if you talk about the depreciation today and its impact on workers, it is disastrous. Mm. Prices are increasing on a daily basis. Meanwhile, the wage is fixed at a particular point in time. Okay. For the businesses, I mean, I pity them. But they are able, on a daily basis, to change their prices to reflect the changes in the exchange rate of the imported materials. How do workers uh, do? How do workers respond? They respond by just using their static stable uh, salaries to meet the changing prices the businesses are offering on the market. Okay. So I agree with you, probably we should move beyond the, the, the talking. Okay. 
But even before we move, I think that this economy has been in crisis for many years. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, once in a while, things come to a head. Okay. Like two years ago, when the depreciation became very rapid over a short period of time, then we talk about it. But in between the two years, there has been depreciation. And uh, so I, I find it difficult that we talk of crisis only at a particular point in time. There's crisis in our households. There's crisis in the, at the domestic production front. Businesses are not able to uh, surmount the rising cost of production and all that. And probably what we need to be doing at this point in time, and as part of the talking, is to be able to have a national economic forum, not just once, but every year, for all of us to agree that the excessive import is hurting this economy, we should patronize. For all of us to agree that we need to do something about the external payment regime that we have so over liberalized and people can transfer any amount of dollars out of Ghana. Uh, no, For no. all of us to agree mm. that something two years ago when we were talking about this, one of the issues we spoke about is the way we have allowed our currency to be traded openly, informally, across, in front of police stations. Mm. You have people standing there around the airport runabout, trading uh, in, um, in the currency. The Bank of Ghana did something about it uh, briefly, and those people disappeared. Today, they are back on the street. We need some consistency in tackling the challenges, not this upbeat uh, one-off uh, attempt that we do. And, and, and then if, if our suggestions are not being heard, are not being taken on board, Probably as unions and as civil society organizations, we should do what unions do. We need to power pressure on the managers of the economy, not just these managers, the future managers that will come to make sure that they do the right things for the people of Ghana. Import substitution, you have stated over and again, is one of the surest ways to prop up, not just prop up the economy, I mean, or do so. Um, in a manner that is sustainable. 1D1F was brought in. So what are we doing wrong that we still can't seem to resolve the problem, even in the face of bringing in uh, programs like that? Okay. So it's amazing that we are launching factories and, and industries, but the import bill keeps rising. Okay. So what we are doing wrong, in my view, is that we are not actively supporting a domestic production sector. Okay, we are not doing that. The Americans do that. Look at Biden and his buy made in America. Look at the Chinese. Look at the, everybody is doing that. But we have something here we call the import lobby. Okay, so not long ago, the radio stations and television stations that were promoting buy made in Ghana rise were threatened by the import lobby and they stopped. So this morning, for example, I heard on another network that there's an excess of um, domestic rice on our market, but nobody is buying them. And we are still consuming large amount of rice that have been stored in silos for decades. Okay, the import lobby is strong and we are in the political season. They are actually funding political parties and will surely dominate the policy discussion after the political season is over. We are doing something not right. Our cost of production domestically is too high. Our infrastructure is too weak. Now, when you are at this stage and level of development, you need a special program to support and I dare say to protect domestic production. Unfortunately, we are not doing any of those things. In, in the meantime, how are your members, you know, coping and surviving these really, really telling times? As, uh, as people say, Ghanaian workers are magicians. Mm -hmm. It's really terrible for not just our members, for ordinary Ghanaians. That's right. Everybody. Our members earn a salary. It is so woefully inadequate. Okay to confront the changing prices that uh, we see on a daily basis in our, in our market. But you should also remember that there are just so many Ghanaians that do not earn any regular incomes, and they are having a hard time putting body and soul together. And this is the more reason why 
we need a national conversation going, a serious non-partisan conversation about how we arrest the fall of the city, about how we produce domestically, about how we encourage Ghanaians to buy made in Ghana, but about how we also use policy to limit import, to support domestic production, to support the businesses that are doing their best, but they are suffocating under the unsustainable competition that we have introduced them to. All right, Dr. Kwabna Nyako Otu, Chief Economist and Director, Labor Research and Policy Institute, Trade U Trades Union Congress. Uh, it's a pleasure always talking to you. 